welcome into another episode of Restaurant Hoppin'. I'm your host, Dan Hoppin', and when I think of the term gyro, I have a very distinct image in my mind, but there's a new Omaha restaurant that has caused me to kind of reshape my thinking on what a gyro can be and just how delicious it can be. And I am so excited to talk with these guys today. I've got Mo Abdallah and Faisal Fami, who are the owners of Euro Kings. They're joining me on the podcast today to, to talk about just a style of Euro that Omaha needs to become more familiar with. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, I'm always excited to talk about Euros, but yes. especially with two esteemed gentlemen like yourselves. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, before we even get into this podcast, because I think we're going to be teasing some taste buds, people are going to be wanting to know more about this place and where it is. I'm just going to start right off the bat. You guys are located at 632 Saddle Creek Road. If anyone's familiar with the old Sam's Euros, same spot. Same spot. Yeah. So let's get into what a Euro can be, because I think when most people in Omaha think of a Euro, they're thinking of the Greek version. They're thinking the, your traditional Euro. Yes. Yeah. Some form of beef lamb combination inside a pita with tzatziki onions tomatoes that's it you guys are doing (laughs) something very different to tell me about it and tell me what style you're going for so back home where i'm from i'm from new jersey originally so back home when we used to go to the city there would be a bunch of euro spots and then there would mostly middle easterns like us like egyptians or from syria or from anywhere and they added the twist to it, which is adding more toppings to the sandwich, making their own sauce instead of tzatziki sauce, putting it over rice, doing all these things. So we, my family loved it. We would, every time we went to the city, we would always get this. So when I moved here to Omaha about 10 years ago, Sam's was here. He was doing that same style pretty much at the mall, at Oakview Mall and stuff like that. Yeah. So I liked the idea and I thought it was cool. So then now, 10 years later, me and him decided to do it. And change the game in Omaha. It's like it's, it's really good in Jersey and New York, so why not do it here? Change it because it's like everybody has your traditional euro. Any euro spot you go to is just going to be your traditional euro. That's it. Some people change their sauce, and that's about it, but nothing about like the toppings. It's always the same thing, and it's always over the pita, and nothing special. So we wanted to bring that special to it and change it. And then we have our own style rice, of course. So, and, and I want to get into your style. But I want to start with that, that New York style, because I think most people who are listening to this are still probably, they're trying to figure out exactly what that is. They're like, wait a second, there's a new style out there. From what I could tell, so I tried to do a little bit of research on this. This style of Euro, it, it was like a movement that kind of started in New York with around, the, around the 90s. Yes, with halal guys. Yeah, that's that, who I used to go to. <laughs> exactly. So it was chicken over turmeric rice with Correct. a white sauce. What was it about that dish that, like, implanted in your mind where even when you moved to Omaha, it was still like, man, I want that. It, it just changed the game. Like, over rice, it's so good. It tastes really good. And then they had their own special white sauce. It wasn't tzatziki. It wasn't no cucumber sauce. It was like a garlicky sauce. So I thought that was really good, too. It went together, like, perfectly. And then the pita also, so you can still scoop it and eat it. But yeah. they chopped up the pita to, like, small pieces, so you just hit it with a fork, everything, just eat it all together. Yeah. Not like us, we change it a little bit. We have like a salad on your own. This one, they have the salad in like a little corner and then everything's on top of each other. So I want to change it a little bit just because so I can be different. But yeah, it's, that's everywhere over there. What are some other like indicators of your style? Probably the rice would be the main thing, you know, having yeah. like our own twist to the, to the, the rice. rice. The and king sauce, the king spicy sauce yeah that's what's really different from and the spicy people. salad they don't do that out yeah. there so that's, what's what's the flavor profile of the king sauce somebody's listening to this they're trying to figure out what what's king sauce there's a lot of dairy in there so we use dairy uh obviously i don't want to like give out no 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 <laughs> we're not asking you to give out the trade secrets here uh, it's something really that replaces a cucumber sauce and tzatziki sauce but it really complement the food really well it goes together really good yeah, yeah we try to find something that will go good together with the food and that worked and i love how you said like every bite tastes different that's yes. was one of our main goals like not having the same meal and everything is just the same yeah exactly different flavors different things yeah. that's and like i said in that video that you're referencing that's my main complaint with rice bowls is like you're pretty much getting the same, the same bite thing. over yeah. and over yeah. again but when you get a rice bowl or a rice platter from euro kings i mean you could get 
the beef, you could get the chicken. You got two different sauces. Two different sauces I mean, I I take the salad and I yeah. just mix it in there with and everything. So then do. you then you've got everything all together at once. And yeah, yeah every single bite is it's, it's just like I'm not exactly sure now. what I, what I'm <laughs> yes, getting in this bite, but I'm here for yes, it. That's true. No, that's the whole purpose. Yeah. That salad is changes everything because you get to pick your salad too. Mm-hmm. It's not like halal guys. You only got lettuce, tomato, onion. That was it. Like you had no choice. That was the salad you get. And yeah. your rice and your chicken, or if you want just all rice, or I mean all chicken or all beef. But yeah, so we changed it a little bit and brought it to Omaha. Yeah. Now we got to talk about chicken too, because I think, again, when most people think of a gyro, they're thinking of either lamb or probably more common the beef lamb yeah. combo that they see roasted on the spit and then it gets cut off and everything. And don't get me wrong, I love a beef gyro. I got nothing wrong yeah, with that. Me too. But, but you guys, chicken. Yeah. Oh, on that gyro, that's a game changer. Like it is so moist and so juicy, and whatever that marinade is, yeah. like, do not change it. <laughs> it is. It's, so that that it, was his plan. Like we need to come with a recipe that will make our chicken bladder the number one. <laughs> that was his plan. Yeah. Why specifically the chicken platter? Why did that I have mean, to like be over, number one? Over rice, but like because can. the chicken is homemade. Yeah, like the gyro we buy. Like you said, you you can buy the spit from anywhere. Anybody can buy that and have that same taste. But you can't buy my recipe to make the chicken. Yeah, so the chicken has to be number one. Signature. Is chicken a big thing up in New York too? Yes. Everybody's going to be known for their like. There's another guy now that's taken over the game over there. Who's that? Not halal guys. It's called Adil's famous food truck. Oh yeah. Come up. Yeah, the lines for three hours long. Like, oh, it's crazy. Crazy. Oh shoot! But the scene out there is crazy compared to here, of course. Tell me more about it, because like I'm I'm trying to wrap my head around this. Is it just like food carts on Everywhere. every corner? Every corner, yeah. and there's always going to be like three or four that are like the big ones that make it, that their food it's like signature or known. Yeah. So this guy puts barbecue sauce in the white sauce, and then this green sauce. I think which he puts like what four it sauces is. on yeah. it, or he three like sauces. <laughs> yeah, it's. And he's known for his chicken. His chicken is like red. It's Whoa. super red. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What well, this is Adil's? Yeah. It's called Adel's Famous Food Truck in New York City. I'm looking this up right now. This doesn't make for very good podcasting, but I, I like have to know. Yeah. So, Faisal, have, have you been to New York? Have you experienced this? Or are you just kind of living through, living <laughs> vicariously through him? Actually, when I came from yeah. Egypt 2012. <laughs> That's him. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He's killing the game. This is like crazy. That yeah. is and vibrant it, red. And he delicious. puts two rices. He puts a spicy rice and then a regular a yellow rice like we do. Look, the, this video right here will show you how he does it. It's crazy. Look, that's the lines all the time. That's insane. We're looking at a line of like, yeah, you weren't kidding, like 60 yeah. people. And this looks like it's 10, 11 at night. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and he's there until 5 so in the morning. he just chops it all. R- spicy rice. Then he gives you the yellow rice on top. Wow. And then he'll put three or four sauces. Holy cow. And they're Egyptian too. And the the thing that's interesting is, I mean, when we're, when we're talking, you put sauces on there. You guys are not skimpy with the sauces. No. It is liberal. <laughs> it like and normally I'm not a huge sauce guy. Like I love the flavor of sauces, but I I tend to you know I'm probably a minimal sauce person on spaghetti yeah. or even on burgers or anything like that. But with you guys, yeah, just get all that yeah. sauce up in there, mix it with that rice. Why so much sauce? Like why so generous? Well, I, go ahead. Yeah, you go. You go. Because I think it's because of the rice. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you put a lot of sauce on top of the meats, and then you mix it with the rice down there, it's it's just perfect. It gets the yeah. rice moist. If yeah. I give it just a little bit the top, you're gonna need more sauce later on for the rice. Yeah. It's so gonna you, be more dry. You just save us a trip coming back yes, to sir. ask for more sauce. Yes, how, how, how nice of you. <laughs> Thank you. And some people are like, keep going, keep going. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> are you sure? Drown it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and you said that you were from Egypt, and I know that you guys have some Egyptian influence in your Euro. Like, yeah. tell me a little bit about that. What, what how is, because I, I don't have, like, really any exposures to Egyptian food, so how is how are those influences, like, influencing your Euros and your Euro platters now? It would be the spicy salad for sure. Okay. That's 100%. It's like Egyptian, Egyptian spicy salad. Yeah. yeah, and I would say the rice. That's Pretty much it. And then the chicken is not really Egyptian. It's just a marinade that I came up with. Because even back home, like, most of our meals with, with rice, like, seafood, we have special, special rice, rice for seafood. Yeah. Like, grilled meats, we have special rice for grilled meat. Like, it's all over rice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
that's why like we knew it's gonna rise better it's gonna be much way like a better way to have a gyro as a meal a full meal mm-hmm. yeah? not just like a sandwich or yeah. right so yeah i want to be clear to anyone who's watching or listening right now you can come in and you can have a great euro sandwich at euro kings and i remember on my first visit my dad and i came in we each got euros and we we're sitting there and we were really happy and but you guys were like next time you got to get the rice like yeah. th- that's the way to do it and yeah i came in next no. time and i was like shoot yeah. like no offense euro like I'm, I'm not i'm not coming back yeah. to the pita anymore no, this no. is where it's at the it rice is. platter that's how i like it yeah. Okay, now, the other menu item that i got to ask you about is the falafel. Because every other preparation of falafel that I've ever seen is made from ground up chickpeas. And I've, I've, had some, I've had some less good versions of that. And I've had some excellent versions yeah. of that. But you guys using fava beans instead of chickpeas. How does that change the texture and the flavor profile to you to make a better falafel? I feel like it gives it a nuttier taste. I would agree. Yeah, so it makes it more crunchy. It, that's 100% Egyptian, the whole, like, fava bean thing. We never eat it with chickpeas. Back home, I've never had it with chickpeas in my life. Yeah. My mom makes it with fava beans. Everywhere you go in Egypt, you get it with fava beans. And we also have fava bean dip like that we eat also, not just make falafel. So we use fava bean for two things. You make, like, a bean dip, and then you have the falafel. That's a breakfast for us. Really? Yeah. Mainly breakfast, yeah. Mainly breakfast. It's way better than oatmeal and toast. <laughs> well, we need to start bringing that over yeah. here more no, often. No. Yeah, so, and the other thing that makes it really different, like instead of using the dried spices, we use green spices, veggies. Like, okay. Yeah. Which most people should do that, but some places but don't. don't. That's why it won't be as green inside. Like, for example, if you use, like, parsley, instead of using parsley, dried parsley flakes or whatever, use, like, fresh parsley. Yeah. So trying to make or fresh cilantro. ingredients, yeah. I love it. Yeah. So we've talked a lot already about how different you guys' offerings are from what the average Omaha expects from a Euro. So I imagine you've had some pretty fun conversations or interactions when people come into Euro Kings and they're looking around, you know, maybe, maybe they even order and they, they see what you guys are doing. They're like, whoa, where, where's the tzatziki or something yeah, like that? always yeah. ask about that. Have you, like, what kind of conversations have you had with people to educate them on exactly what you're doing? Mostly about the tzatziki. Everybody's like, oh, do you have tzatziki? I'm like, no, it's our own special sauce. Oh, uh, what is that? So we'll let him try. He'll make him a little sample. Like how I think you had the sample once too with the rice and then he'll mm-hmm. give chicken and beef and then he'll put both sauces and let them try. And then they're like, oh, yep, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. They're like, nope, I don't care about the tzatziki now because... It tastes good, you know. It tastes really good. Like, it goes together really well. It's, yeah. it's just one of those things you just kind of have to experience it. Like, we can talk yeah. about it for the next hour, and people will be like, oh, that sounds, that sounds good. Yeah. But then you go in and you try it. And I think you have to, you don't have to, but I would highly recommend getting the two sauces because I think that the mild yes. one that's got the more garlic, when it plays with the little, and it's not super spicy, but the little yeah, bit of heat in the, the spicy, those two just come together and yeah. make magic. Yeah, and, and we did this on purpose. Like, we have the salad is really spicy, and we have the sauce is like 4 out of 10. So if people want to try both, they can handle it. Most people can handle it. Yeah. They can amp up yeah. the heat and, if they and want to. And we want them to take both because it tastes really good. It's a lot of flavor in it. Something else that you guys do that I just want to highlight and that I don't think every Euro place does this. And whether it's the chicken or it's the Euro meat, you're finishing that on the flat top. So you're not just cutting it off the spit and then putting it in a sandwich, but you're putting it on that griddle and getting that extra like crispy bits on it. Oh, man. That's what these guys do out there. So I wanted the same thing. And to be honest, it's kind of like raw when you get it like that. It's not full. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, the outside like is It's going to be burned outside, but from inside. How about they no. cut it thick? Like how, I don't want to say any other restaurant names, sure. but if they cut it thick, you know, then the inside of it is still raw. So. Have, have you <laughs> had customers come in that are familiar with that style from up in New York? I had a few, yeah. We had people come straight for here. Heard, oh, you guys are heard of like, you're like New York, so I want chicken over rice because they already know. Especially Seriously? When you start yeah. chopping, the, chopping the chicken on the grill. It's like, yeah, because you guys come they from do. New York or <laughs> they, they know it. Yeah, we had a few. They'll come and be like, I want the chicken over rice, like New York. And I'm like, all right, man. That's really cool. Yeah. 
how fun has it been for you to bring something not completely new? Because you mentioned that Sam's was doing this previously, but a little different. Than yes, us. you guys yeah. are doing. You've made some tweaks from Sam's, and I, I think your popularity. Nothing against Sam's, but has surpassed his a little bit. Yeah. I think you're getting some customers that did, never did not there. come into his place. <laughs> yeah. How fun has it been for you to like introduce this? brand new thing to people really it's a dream come true yeah. really that's been it's my dream is to have a restaurant and serve people and then i always wanted to do it with like somebody that i can get along with so me and Faisal were like been friends for 10 years now since i moved to omaha yeah. so couldn't be any better to okay be honest. let's get into that how did you guys meet where did the friendship start Oakview Mall. Oakview Mall yeah. i came here i had my own business i used, I used to design shirts at the malls really Mm -hmm. So I had a location at Oakview Mall, and he was working at Sam's at the mall. Like eight years ago, yeah. So I went to get food, and I met him, and then we linked right away, like immediately. The first conversation, we became best friends. <laughs> I swear, it was like, yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. we talked, and it's like, you're off tomorrow, yeah, you're off tomorrow, yeah. Okay, we're going to hang out tomorrow, sure. I, don't have a, I didn't have a car at the time. He came, picked me up, and we hanged out the whole day. What did you guys and do? Just, just hanging out and we went to the park we stayed at home we played some dominoes and it was yeah first time FIFA. yeah <laughs> we played FIFA and had playstation yeah did you when you were working at sam's did like was was that just a job was were you, you like interested in having a career in the food industry or kind of wh where did you start from Faisal? no actually it was like a job to me yeah and i was working with them and i learned a lot from them but later on after they left like I love the food and I know I can do more with it and I can make people like love it even more. So that's why it, let's, yeah, we made a plan and we did it. <laughs> did you, Mo, did you have any experience or background in the culinary industry? Yeah. So a lot of my jobs I've done was cooking back home. Okay. I, would, I did a lot of breakfast cooking. I actually worked in a cart in New York City with my uncle back in the day. Really? I was like 18. Yeah. A breakfast cart? No, that one was euros and stuff like ah, that. Ah, gotcha. Okay. But. I've worked at a breakfast restaurant back in the day, yeah, so. And he has a flat tub in the house, and he likes to grill and cook. He loves to cook. <laughs> yeah. We both do. So. Cook a lot of food at home. Yeah. What I, what I really, I, I really like about you guys is, I mean, you, you know, you're talking about this is, this is a food that distinctly ties you back to growing up in the Northeast and yeah. even working on a cart with your uncle and face all. I mean, this was you know, kind of your introduction to the culinary field in, in, in Omaha, like how meaningful is it to you guys that you're kind of, for most Omahans, you're the ones who are introducing this style of cuisine and this food to them for the first time. That, I mean, that's got to like mean something yeah, to you, makes, right? It makes me happy. Uh, yeah, it's honest. a real pleasure to see people loving it and coming back for it. It, it's so much we've been seeing a lot of good feedback which is definitely makes us happy so it shows that our hard work is actually working because we've been busting our butts you know like hard to clean that place to turn it around to make it known again because it fell apart yeah well we'll get into that well okay so I, I i need to rewind a little bit go back in the origin story so you guys somehow best friends from day one like it just happened yeah <laughs> how, how did that friendship progress? And I mean, at what point did you start? Like, was was food a common thread in your friendship from the yeah, very yeah. beginning? We always cook food together, like home Egyptian foods, like home make something, bring it over to my house, I'll make something, or we'll all have like a like a, together. We'll all meet up at like Sundays because we're always always ahead of Sundays off from our other jobs too. So we'd all hang out, grill, or do something. Like all of our friends, we have a few Egyptian friends. So they would all come with their families, kids, if they have them, you know, and they just link up because <laughs> there's only a few of us. So you want to, like, be tight, you know, Sure. back in New Jersey, there's thousands. You know, it's not like here. Here's just a small community. Big Arab communities back there. Mm -hmm. yeah. At what point does the thought of owning a restaurant together, not necessarily Euro Kings, but just like. Any restaurant, you know, in general, like, Me hey, him? yeah, together. I think two years ago. Okay. What, what was the thought there? Do you guys remember that conversation? Kind of. Like, all I said was, like, I think we should open something together. And then he was like, yeah, let's do it. And we were, no, we were going for the Euros right away. Like, we were. You knew. Yeah, yeah. That's what we wanted to so do. So we wanted like, to do the Euros or either, like, authentic Egyptian food. Like, we have, like, a 
bar and grill, like a big store, and you have all Egyptian food. But that was like really tough to do, and you have to have a big staff. Yeah, that's the goal. Yeah. That's the future. And I want to so talk. I want to talk about the future. Forward, yeah. But like, talk to me a little bit about Egyptian food because you guys have said you know that that's what we like to cook. You know, just mm-hmm. when we're friends together. I know that the the goal at some point. You know, I just knew that you wanted to do like Egyptian specials on Saturdays. But now you're talking potentially having that be a lot more of the business model. Like, what types of food are we talking here? So I'm not sure if you ever had Egyptian food, but ours. No, I, mean, I want to hear about it'd it. It'd be like a sit down eat though, like not fast because it'd be either rice with some yeah. potatoes. We we eat rice with potatoes, which people probably think it's crazy, but yeah, that we do. That sounds awesome. Like with red potatoes and meat in it, or we have this special soup called malocheya. Malocheya is made out of this leaf called malocheya, which I think in English is a. It's very. I, can, I don't even know the name of it in English. To be honest, for you. but it's a leaf. Okay. And, they just grind it up and make a soup out of it. That's like the number one Egyptian dish right there. Like everybody in Egypt loves it. Yeah. So if we brought that here, I think it would change the game. For but sure. I don't know. It'll, it'll take a lot of work, you know, because you can't be the only guy know how to do it all because it's it's going to be tough. Hmm. So okay. it's, we get we get the leaves, you chop them, and then you put them with some water and then seasonings to it, and it has a specific seasoning it, that's really good and shrimp <laughs> and very over healthy, rice very healthy which one day we'll do that for a special that that's going to change everybody's thought of ever eating shrimp over rice because we have a special rice for fish it's called the fisherman rice back home really yeah, yeah. It, you know, i love that specific oh, rice, it's yeah. so good <laughs> seriously you will never eat rice with fish but that ever ever again oh man i want to ask you so many questions about it but i don't want to like give anything <laughs> away so i'll just i'll just have to come taste it and yeah and i think m- hopefully soon we've been actually th- talking about it that's the one meal that we might start here soon to do like on specials for but, saturdays and does it still get topped with all the sauce we'll and everything or is this sauce. different oh this is a tahini sauce yeah. okay we're talking yeah, now this gets tahini gosh you guys excite <laughs> me so much just the excitement that you have about food and about you know, the ideas of, of bringing these these foods that most people, like me, have never tasted and would probably love, but we just need somebody to give it to us. To be and, honest, it's a lot of mom's recipes, but we just add twists to them just to change them up a little bit. Uh-huh. A lot of them are, yeah, we call them up like, hey, mom, what do we do? <laughs> 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 They're the pros, you know, uh-huh. especially when it comes to like our style food, like Egyptian food. Yeah. So. And that's how we made the rice pudding in the store. Yeah. That was, mm. That's mom's recipe. Right that's, recipe. that's some good yeah. rice pudding. Yeah. It's different for sure. And, and what's your twist on that? You said you like to take There's, mom's recipes, put a twist on it. This one, actually, we kept it completely hers because you don't mess with she, mom's yeah, rice pudding. Not with that one, yeah. She's the pro at that. There's no milk in that at all. So it's rice with milk, but with no milk. That's the twist. That's Wait, the what? Big twist. It's not yeah. like not. I mean, not like a plain milk. Not oh, like whole God, milk yeah. or whatever. yeah. There's no whole milk at all. Okay, so. Getting back to the origin story, so you just casually throw it out, hey, we should do a concept together. You know that it's going to be Euros. How did you start down the path to take this just idea and make it a reality? So we were looking for places for a while, me and him, and then I went to Egypt to go visit because I haven't been there in a long time. Then when I came back, we saw Sam's was closed, and we were like, oh, wait, he closed. Maybe that place is up for a rent or sale or whatever. Yeah. So we were calling the place, trying to get it, and it took forever. But we finally got it, and then we did it. But, yeah, it was, it was tough. I was looking at a lot of places, but I really wanted that one just because I already had everything, as in, like, the hood and all that. I didn't have to go do all that. And it was already known as a Euro place, so. And it's a really good location. Yeah, it's a little weird over there sometimes, but it's a nice location right across from Mama's. Mama's is always busy. The Saddle Creek is always busy. So we figured if we can get this place, at least get our name out there there, and then we can do whatever we want after, expand or whatever, maybe go out west. But that's future. So So what did you guys do just in your communication to immediately differentiate yourselves? I mean, obviously it's a different name, but I remember when I first ate at Euro Kings and then I posted about it, everybody was, and I'd never eaten at Sam's, so everybody's pat- posting, like, they're asking me and commenting. They're like, hey, is this 
just Sam's Euros? Is this in the old Sam's Euros location? I was like, I have, I don't, I don't know what's going on here. Like, how did you kind of, what kind of messaging do you have to have to kind of break away from Sam's and say, yeah, Sam's was great, but this is something different? I was going to say, even if people confusing it, if like the food look the same or like same color or same anything, but still the, we change the flavor somehow. For the rice, we change the chicken 100%. It's the our, sauce. Yeah, yeah, the sauce is completely different. But yeah, he had the same concept. And that's why we wanted to bring it back home after they left. Because mm-hmm. yeah. we know it's really good meals to have like gyros with rice or this. But yeah, it was all good. And they're all gone, so it was our opportunity to take it and start it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think when a lot of people think of owning a restaurant, they, they think about cooking the food and having the recipes and everything. And that's certainly very important because mm-hmm. if you don't have good food, you're not going to have business. Of course. But there's so much more that goes into it. There's the permits. There's, uh, you oh, know, yeah. the health, the health department. Yeah, all kinds of paperwork. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't even know a tenth of it. You guys have lived it. What, like, how do you get yourself up to speed on all the other stuff? I mean, I'm sure you guys went in and you're feeling like, we got our recipes down. We know we can cook. We know we can make great food. But you got to have the other stuff, too. How did you get yourself up to speed on, like, more of the business aspect of it? So a lot of research, of course. I had to. And I owned my own business originally or before. So I kind of, like, knew a little bit about owning a business. But the permits and all that, that was the biggest headache, of course. It was trying to get all the Sorry. permits, contact the health department, contact all the recipes and all that. I wasn't even worried about that. I already, I we had, already knew we had that. Different yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I know I got killer yeah. food, whatever. Yeah, the food I wasn't but I gotta, worried about, seriously. I was so worried about getting that place cleaned and looking sharp because you have no idea how this place looked when we got it. Well, tell me. Because so, I think it was abandoned for one year. I, maybe like a year or, and a half. Or something oh, like shoot. That. Yeah, that it was really bad yeah, inside. I, had, I, I guess they kicked them out or something i'm not sure because okay. i had like a no trespassing sign on the door when we got it you literally stuck to the floor when you walked in yeah it was <sighs> horrible from the grease and all of that i don't know from the, what it was but it was nasty it took us about two and a half months to get it to where it's at now to clean it and and we did it all ourselves paint it clean it do it all and i've never painted in my life <laughs> yeah. Seriously, I know you probably painted enough for the rest of your life. You're yeah. just like, I'm good. No, I'm done now. <laughs> well, we did it somehow. And uh, we had, of course, help from friends that helped us. And then we waxed the floor. We did it all to get it back to speed. But yeah, the permits and all that stuff took forever. Finally got that all done, figured out the tax information and all that stuff, the LLC and all that fun stuff. Got that done. And then now we finally opened. And then you came in and changed the game, to be honest, when you came in. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. I want, I want to talk more about, like, creating the restaurant. Like, so, restaurant design. I mean, that's huge in yeah, figuring out, you know. The color theme. Yeah, the, the color theme. Where do guests sit? Where, where, where's, like, the, the napkin and utensil station? You know, how, how are we going to design the i don't want to say kitchen because it's more of like a front facing space but like a you know basically an area for us to be able to cook and do our dance together while getting customers checked out how did you guys design all that actually you just mentioned that we designed it all except for the kitchen because we wanted the kitchen to be like more of a hidden like people don't have to deal seeing the smoke or Uh yeah but other than that yeah we if we're going to make a change, that's going to be it. <laughs> but designing it, yeah, the color scheme, we we just thought, I personally was like, I think the yellow and black would look great. I think if we did all yellow and then just one small black wall and put that big mirror that we put, the picture of the Egypt. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I think the, the color scheme would look good because, like I said, I used to design stuff like shirts and stuff. So I already have that design mindset. And it went together perfectly, I think. I think it looks great. Because at first people would be like, no, black, that's too dark. It's going to be bringing it down. It's not yeah, good for our restaurant, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, just wait till it's done. I'm yeah. like, just wait. It's going to look great. Because they're yeah. just thinking of a whole black wall, not thinking about the pictures or anything. Or the yellow that's yeah. coming next. And yeah. None of that. I think the aesthetic comes together really nicely. And those yeah. shirts okay. are Thank you. Which now that I know that you have a background in shirt design, that does not surprise me one bit. He made, a, he made the t-shirts he too. Did a heck of a job. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. 
Okay, menu design. I mean, you guys have talked about, you've got all these Egyptian dishes that you're so excited about and you would love to bring to Omaha, but you haven't done that yet. Yeah. You've paired it yeah, back. Like, you've said, we're just sticking with euros. How hard was that to, because it is so important, especially when you have a small restaurant and when it's you guys working to have that really locked in focus to make sure that you are executing the dishes that you're offering to the highest degree and you're not spreading yourself too thin. I love that you guys do that, but that's hard. How did you have to force yourselves to focus and say, this stuff's all great. Maybe we'll offer that in the future, but right now it's euros. Yeah. Cause, go ahead. No, go ahead. Tell I was going to say like it's, the Egyptian restaurant is really, really way bigger than a yeah. restaurant. Mm -hmm. Way, way you big, need bigger. Space. You need like two professional chefs to work with you. Yeah. There's a lot At to least. make. There's it's a lot of food so to much, make. Yeah. You got to go to New York or Cali for that. They have them everywhere. Some foods take two hours to prep. Some foods take overnight to prep. Some food, yeah, it's a lot. But so just me and him starting up and first time, yeah, we can handle the gear together. Because yeah, we, we, we both this. know and we both cook. Get known and then slowly bring in the Egyptian food within the specials on Saturdays. Like, mm -hmm. all right, one day is this Egyptian meal, then next Saturday maybe it's this Egyptian meal, then kind of like introduce people, because nobody knows really what uh, Egyptian food people, is. Yeah. They're only used to Middle Eastern food, not yeah. Egyptian food. There's a big difference. Everybody makes their own kebabs, everybody makes their own, everybody's the best at this, and you know, so like you're gonna have Turkish gonna say, well, they have the best shish kebabs, and then you're gonna have uh, Syrian who will say, I have the best shawarma, and, Everybody's going to say that. So it's, it's a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of things to do. But we want to do it slowly, slowly do the fish and, and shrimp first with the rice. I think that's going to be the first dish we're going to bring into the, to the table soon. Shrimp over rice. Well, I just want to commend you guys for having that patience because I've seen restaurants crash and burn because they have all these ideas and they try and just launch them all right off the bat, especially but, yeah. as first-time restaurant owners. And no, it, it's not good. Even talented chefs and talented cooks it can go very poorly so yeah, just saying we're going to take one step we're going to get established then we can take the next step then we can take the next exactly. step that's like actually building a business yeah. versus just dropping a business into the deep yeah. end and saying let's see if it swims and why are you going to give everybody everything you got right away slowly give it to them mm -hmm. you know let them try it first maybe they won't like it mm -hmm. instead of just going all out with it right so i think the gyros or gyros or euros, whatever you want to call them. Yeah. Uh, it's very common, so everybody knows what it is. So now when you add a twist to it with the rice and stuff, then they're like, oh, I'm interested. I want to, I want to see this. I want to try it out. It's familiar enough that you're not giving them something brand new. Exactly. But it's yeah. like, here's something you know, but in a little bit different form. Try right? this with it. Try then, with this rice. Yeah. And then you get their trust, and then you can do a little bit different with the shrimp and the fish. Yeah. And then you can start introducing more and more and more. Man, look at you guys. Exactly. You're thinking like, this is like 4D chess. <laughs> You're thinking three steps ahead. You need to be. Yeah, you know? for sure. Especially in the restaurant business because you can't just go all in like that. Mm -hmm. You got to go slowly. Because, I mean, even in small restaurants, there's still so many details to it. Like you said, you're talking about the napkins, where you want to put your register or a grill, where you're going to cook. Yeah. There is so many details even to small restaurants. I mean, even as simple as what's silverware? Yeah, are, are we yeah, going to provide what, what takeout so boxes are we going to order so like should yeah. we get regular place for them to sit in here and then to go boxes for them to go or should i just give everybody to go boxes like yeah, all that so, yeah. they're just the minute details yeah. that no one would ever think of yeah. all of a sudden as a business owner you have to start making those and decisions permits and pay here and pay there that's yeah, it's a lot but we we wanted to do it so we did it it's literally my dream so you're finally make, living it so. you're making it happen yeah when, when did that dream form? Oh, yeah, since I was a kid. Oh, Not yeah. like young, young, but like 18, 19 when I was doing these jobs with that. I always wanted some. Like, and, and anybody that I've ever cooked for, like even my friends, they're always like, you need to have a restaurant. But mostly Egyptian food that I cooked. And they're like, you need to have a restaurant. Which is crazy because I've never really lived in Egypt. So usually I learned all this on my own, like calling my mom. And she would, when I lived in college, she would tell me what to do and then I would do it. Then I just messed up a lot, got better and better and better. <laughs> That's how it is. And now I'm just doing it. <laughs> so uh, I'm fascinated by that. So your soft opening was October 6th, and then I think you guys opened, like, for real the next day, October 7th, 2023. So for you, Mo, I mean, you've had this dream 
for most of your life of owning a restaurant, when you actually open the, like unlock the door and open it up for the first time, what was that like for you? It was very exciting, especially when the first customer came in. Because then it's like, oh, wow, like we're doing it, you know, and somebody's here. Becoming a reality. It, it, yeah, <laughs> like the dream is becoming real, especially that I know I'm not working for somebody. I know I'm working for myself. So that was, that was definitely really nice. And it shows that, like, you can do it, you know, like for anybody that's watching, you can do it. You just got to put your mind to it and just do it. You got to do it. Keep chasing your dreams. Don't stop. Like, I don't know. I'm still chasing it. The Egyptian restaurant is really my dream with the outside, staying on the rooftop with the hookah that's coming Omaha one day. Oh, man. <laughs> I so, can't wait. So, one day. Uh, so, like, I mean, you guys have talked about You knew that the food was good. There, there was no doubt about that. But still, as you're serving customers for the first time, are you kind of like, you know, peeking over at tables, being like, are they liking it? Is, yeah, is it- I ask every customer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we did. We don't leave them, but- how was it? Do you like it? Yeah, I want to know. Because I want to know if I'm doing it good or not, you know? Mm-hmm. So we always ask literally every customer. Both of you when, you, think, when you think back to those first couple days, whether it's the soft open or the first day that you were open, what are some of the first memories that pop to the front of your mind? Well, for me, I had a daughter on the 12th. So <laughs> I think that was the day after you came. Yep. So My uh, bad. Well, I was with her at the hospital, and then I got a call, like, I have a line. And I'm like, oh, my God. So I had to leave. I didn't even get to see her get born. Really? Yeah. So I had to leave Ooh, to come help him. He was alone. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, that was definitely the, the highlight of the whole opening and because like that was within a week. Big group came in. I was like, I saw Dan Hobbins post. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, blew up. it was wild. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I know you guys have said that I've helped a lot for business. Maybe. I don't know. I just, just I just try and get the word out there. You guys are the ones who are creating the great food. And, and yeah, Claire reached out to me and she's like, hey, there's that's Mo's wife. And she's like, hey, I had no idea that she was pregnant, much less days away from giving <laughs> yeah. birth. But she's just like, hey, my husband just opened this place. They're, they're doing euros with an Egyptian twist. And she sent the menu. And I was like, I love euros. This sounds really good. I want to try something different. And it was it was coming in and just experiencing that was just such a cool time. And you guys are so welcoming and friendly. And you break down the menu and say, okay, here's what's different than what you're expecting from a Euro. And it really just set the scene for a good time. Even the sandwich is different because you can put so much toppings on there. Yeah. You get to pick it, whatever you want. So it's nice. Some people put pickles because we have pickles, but we do it with the falafel. I, th- I think that's weird. <laughs> Some people want that. That, like, that wouldn't be my speed, me but I mean, if that fits your palate, yeah. then like, Go more yeah, power I mean, to you, I suppose. Like, I love cucumbers and my gyros. Yeah. They don't serve them anywhere. Like, it's just lettuce. I mean, not even lettuce, no, lettuce. tomatoes, onions, and just. Tzatziki. No. Yeah. Cucumber on gyros, it does change. Cucumber is so really good. good. Yeah. Especially we, fresh, I, I, fresh I love cucumber. it personally. I just, me I love too. it. And actually, I've gotten that comment before, like, oh, that cucumber on there changes it. Uh-huh. The Instead cu- of the sauce. The cucumber, gyro meat, and the white sauce, they go together perfectly. So th- no other place serve cucumbers in the gyros. I, I haven't seen one yet. Well, it's a good addition. Just adds that nice little, like, crunch. fresh pop. Yeah, some the crunch, th- a little bit of... Because cucumbers are very watery, yeah. so it yeah. gives it a little bit of moisture. And if you think about it, if there is no tzatziki sauce in other restaurants, they have a cucumber sauce to go on the gyro. Well, mm. tzatziki is so a cucumber just, sauce, pretty mm-hmm. much. Yeah. yeah, but more yogurt. You know. Yogurt and cucumber yeah. and dill. Mm. Well, yeah, we're here to change the game. So, <laughs> first of all, you are a crazy man, Mo, for opening a restaurant. Like, <laughs> with, obviously, you never know when a baby is going to be well, born, exactly. but. You have that general time frame, and it, it happened that you opened a restaurant and had okay. a second child within the same week. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> I, I mean, it, I know that you can't plan that, but, no. like, <laughs> what what was that like? My mind was everywhere. So it's like my mind is with Claire and the business, but I was there serving, so I didn't know what to do. But after I was done, I think we closed at 9 and cleaned up. I went to the hospital that night and stayed there till like, 1 or 2, and then came back to gyro kings the next day to work we're doing it i don't know you're doing it that's the hard times so i've i've seen a lot of restaurants open in omaha 
I can probably count on one hand ones that have just exploded out of the gates like you guys have. I mean, it is just, I go online and it's just, even before I visited, it's Euro Kings, Euro Kings, Euro Kings. And normally, you know, you see mostly positive re- reviews and then some people are like, oh, you know, it, it was okay that, or yeah. oh, I had high expectations and didn't quite get there. And everybody's just like with you guys, just like fire emojis. And it's like totally lived up to the hype and all this stuff. What do you think? I mean, what was it about you guys that allowed you to just hit the ground running so hard? I'm surprised, too. I, I want to say it's mom's prayers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> prayers go a long way. Uh, I was surprised, too, to be honest. We thought it was going to, like, take off in a year when we're, like, known. Like, people know who we are and try our food. But, no, it did take off, like, immediately. It was crazy. I don't know, to be honest. I don't know how it happened. I, I don't know if it was you. I don't know. I what. think it's both, I think, because we love to cook. We love serving people. And then when a guy like you comes through, honest man, people trust you and people like believe you and you're just honest to the people, they listen to you and they come and try the food. And yeah, it's true. They, they love the food, yeah. So it's not like you're just saying nice words about our restaurant. It's true, you love the food. Too. And what yeah. makes I me love the food is yeah, so everybody commenting on something different. So it's like, oh, I love the, the combo player. But you didn't talk about the falafel. And then there's the other ones like, oh, you didn't talk about the yeah. salad. Or you didn't. It's like everybody's mentioning different things, which is nice. That makes us, that means they like all of it, mm-hmm. which, is, which is awesome. So you guys come in with an expectation that, you know, you're hopeful that you'll be busy. But, you know, tempered expectations saying we're going to grow this. We'll be known in a year. Yeah. When all of a sudden, when that timeline gets yanked into like two weeks yeah how do you adjust on the fly because i mean i'm sure that there's your you have to adjust your own hours you have to adjust how much food we're ordering i mean maybe you adjust the hours the restaurant's open i don't know how like what adjustments are you making on the fly to accommodate this crazy amount of business that you didn't see coming we had to go to the do food shopping almost every day Randomly, at one point. Yeah, yeah random go, stuff. Go, go, go. We're out of this now, go. We're out of this, go grab it. <laughs> out of, yeah, we really need this tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And yeah. the first three and we have, weeks is just me and him. So when it got busy, it was just me and him. It was crazy. I don't even know how we did it, but we did it. Yeah. Now we have help on the weekends, but. I was going to say, I hope you guys. Because the couple times that I've been in, it, it has just been you. I, was yeah. gonna, I hope that you guys have added at least one or two yeah. people. Fridays and Saturdays. Yeah. <coughs> yes, we added one. Good. That gives you a, a, little, a bit, little bit of sanity. Because yeah. one could be on the grill. The other one is taking the orders, and then she can ring people up. So it's perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So we've talked a good deal about the future of Euro Kings. But I, I kind of want to hone in a little bit, like... Not not getting into the full on Egyptian restaurant itself yet, but just Euro Kings. Yeah. Other than the specials on Saturdays, how do you see Euro Kings continuing to grow and evolve in the future? Well, the goal is to open obviously a second location of the same exact thing, same style. Euro Kings maybe like not way out west, but like a little bit out west, just so for the people that don't have to travel. Because I have people come like, oh, I drove all the way from Fremont or I drove all the way from uh, 180th. And I'm like, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty far. 40 minutes <laughs> so to So maybe like us. 120th, yeah. 140th, somewhere around these areas like that. That's the goal, like maybe in, hopefully in a year or two. But, yeah, we always just keep giving the same food. If anything, just be the specials every Saturday. I wouldn't want to add anything else to the menu, to be honest. I wanted to keep it as basic as possible. It's better focus on what we got. It's better that way than just keep playing around and adding more stuff. Then, then you're just adding too much headache to yourself, too. So I think just focus on what we got. Just keep it as simple as possible. Just perfect it even better than it is. So that's the goal. And then if we succeed, like I was saying, then we would just keep Jaro Kings the same. Then we would do the actual, just like a whole different name, the Egyptian restaurant. Yeah. But that would be just one nice big one that would just be somewhere in downtown. That's the goal. Well, I want a like rooftop. A- I want something that I can have people eat in here and then they, some people can sit on the top and smoke hookah and hang out because you can't have smoke with food inside. Right. So, Man, if that's, that's huge in our culture. Yeah. Hookah. Yeah. Yeah. If that's something that comes to life, I very much want to experience that. I mean, I, I just love getting into any new cuisine, honestly, but the way that you guys have described it, the way I see your eyes light up when you talk about yeah. it, I'm like, I need to eat this food. Yeah, so, so someday... We're not putting your feet to the fire. We're not putting any timeline on it or anything, someday. but someday. That will come. Okay. 
That gives us something to look yes. forward to. In the meantime, there's plenty of amazing yes. Euro to be had yes. at Euro Kings. I got, uh, before we get out of here, I got two more questions for you guys that I like to have or that I like to ask just about every guest who comes on here. The first one is this. Uh, what is something that you think diners don't understand about the restaurant in- industry that you wish they did understand? Hmm, that's a good question. Get a variety of answers when I ask this. So some that I wish they knew before coming in. With our food, is really not much for them to. They're just gonna come ask me what it is. Or. It, it could be anything about the restaurant industry. It could. It like a lot of people say just the crazy hours or the bad comments that they get. Like yeah. in anything where it's just like somebody walks in Euro Kings and they have no idea what your life is really like. This is your opportunity to tell them. This is what it's like to be a part of the restaurant industry. A lot of people get mad when we tell them we're not opening at till three anymore. So they get like all like, oh, why, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, dude, we're killing ourselves. Like, <laughs> what do you want me to do? Midnight is the best I can do for you, which is still a lot for us. But really, we have a lot of people that already like been there for Sam's. A lot of them did. They just like us better now. They like, oh, well, it's way better. It tastes way better. It's cleaner and this, but. The hate comments, yeah, that, uh, you're going to have haters no matter what. The hate comments, like, it's okay. Like, it's good for us to improve ourselves, but they never complain about how our food tastes, how our food, like, was. Like, it's, it was cold because there is a delivery ticket for 20 minutes to deliver it to a guy, and then it's What do you want me to do about normal. that? It's normal. It's going gonna, it's gonna to get warm. My like, fries are warm. soggy. Well, you traveled 20 minutes. What do you want me to do? Yeah, you ordered takeout <laughs> fries from a half yeah. an hour away. And like, as soon as I get the order, we make it. So if the driver doesn't come right away, it's sitting there. That's what do you want me to do about it? I got orders to do. That's live people are here. So. Yeah, but if they're talking about their gyro meat is so thick, like we can, I can fix that. Like it doesn't have any salt. I can fix that. Like tell me something I can fix. Like I can't do anything about the delivery. Like I, I really can't. So I wish they understand, like, there's some stuff that's it's not our fault, really. And not everybody's going to like but, the sauce, you know. Some yeah. people are not going to like it. It's crazy, crazy people. <laughs> but, I, but I think what, what you guys just said, like, the delivery is an excellent example of things that people don't understand. I mean, because when you're using a third-party delivery service, as soon as you hand that food off, you don't know what's happening with it no. before the customer gets it. I yeah. mean, the, the delivery driver, it could slosh around in his car he, he goes, could, picks up another order drops it, off another exactly, order exactly yes it could yeah. be an hour before he delivers it and you guys would have no idea you gave yeah. it to him in the right amount of time yeah. and it's, yeah no, i, I really can't control it i can't i'm so sorry it's cold <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know the, and this is why i encourage most people and i understand that there are circumstances where you, a timing issue or you've got kids or whatever that you can't come into the restaurant but I would always recommend Me too. make that drive, even if you sit are just eat there. Well, yes, sit down and eat there. But even if you have to get it to go, make that drive, get it yourself and take it. So you're at least controlling every variable. But yeah, it's yeah. so much it's better, better if you yeah. just eat you it there. Eat it. I have a few customers that know the restaurant really well and they leave me comments and I have like sauce on the side so they can heat it later on. And oh, eat it. Like, there you yeah, go. That's, that's very well. Yeah. And we do that. Yeah, yeah it's a good Whatever idea. Whatever they ask, we do. But Some people like grill the onions, grill this. We do whatever they okay. want. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. Other restaurants probably charge them more or stuff, but we just do it. You guys are chill. Yeah. All right. I got to get you out of here on a positive question. What's yeah. your favorite thing about being a part of the restaurant industry? Seeing people happy and telling us your food is great. Yes. I love <laughs> it so much. When they tell me that, that makes me like know that my hard work is paying off. Is that just like an adrenaline shot? Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. It really is. I'm bringing people and I'm coming back. And, and they don't lie. So they do come back and <laughs> bring do. people. Yeah. So it makes me happy to see that they love the food so much. And they really mean it when they say it. Yeah. So that means a lot. That's really cool. Well, I mean, listeners, I think you can tell I'm a, I'm a big fan of this place. Um, I mean, and it is like basically 100% approval rating from what I've seen. And I can I understood why when I tasted the food, but now talking to you guys and kind of getting the backstory behind it, hearing your passion for this food, hearing that, you know, it it's mom's recipes. It's something that has, it's in the family. Like yes. there's a reason that this tastes so good. And 
I'm a huge fan of Euro Kings. Highly encourage anyone listening or watching, go check these Thank guys you. out. Go pay them a visit Thank and just stay tuned because if there is, you know, m- more locations or some Egypt- Egyptian restaurant in the future we're all here for that too yeah, you'll be first to know man all right yeah. for sure thank you so much yeah, guys for you. taking thank the time this, this is a sunday this is their one day off <laughs> and they chose to come and give an hour to this hey, little you, podcast i'm so so grateful wow. thank you for everything that you've we're done and for, for the time today thank and you. we know it's your day off too us so thank you for doing this for us especially too yes it's yeah. truly my yeah. pleasure yeah. thank you thank man. you all right omar as always thanks for eating with us 